All right, so for this next one, you have a calculator and you can type it in and look at this if you want to, but we're just writing an expression giving the total area from zero to two pi. So it'll be one half in a rule zero to two pi of this statement squared, d theta. And you could put it in the calculator if you want, but you weren't asked for that, so, um, so don't bother. All right, number four. So we're given this circle and then this polar graph inside of it, which is two cosine three theta. Um, and then this is R equals two. What is the area of the shaded region? So we're gonna do the whole circle. So a whole circle is pi R squared. And so the radius is two. So it'll be pi times two squared or four pi. And then we wanna subtract out the area of this polar graph. Now it's tempting to do, you know, zero to two pi, but with this three in there, that is gonna change that. Um, and so we wanna set it equal to zero and see, you know, how long it takes to go the whole way around. So we're gonna take this two cosine of three theta, set it equal to zero, which would just be cosine of three theta equals zero if you divide over the two. And so we're gonna look at where this would be zero. So cosine would equal zero at pi over two. And so that would give us theta is pi over six and you divide over that three. So we're starting here. And so the first time you get to zero would be at pi over six. And so if we keep going, the next place cosine is gonna be zero would be three pi over two. If you divide over the three, that would give you pi over two. The threes are just gonna cancel. So we start here, this would be pi over six. As we keep going, hitting there again would be pi over two. So we gotta keep going to get this third leaf in there. Uh, next place would be five pi over two. When you divide by the three, you're gonna get five pi over six. So again, we start here. This would be pi over six. Again, would be pi over two. And then when we come back again, that would be five pi over six. And so when we get back to where we started, that would just be pi. So it's going to be from zero to just pi to get all of that area. And then this is going to go inside squared d theta. So we're doing the whole circle minus that part. And we do have to actually type this one in. Um, and if you want to make sure that you're in polar mode so that it'll come up as a theta instead of an x, it kind of doesn't matter as long as there's a variable in there. But um, it'd be a good idea to be in polar mode for this test anyway, since you're probably gonna wanna look at the graphs at some point. All right, minus one half math nine, zero to pi. And then we have two cosine three theta squared d theta. All right, so 9.424, they always round up. So 9.425, so D for that. All right, and then five, what is the area between these two graphs? So we're gonna have one half integral from zero to pi. And then it would be the two theta plus one squared minus the theta over two squared d theta, and then we're gonna type that in. So 30.819. All right, so all of these parts are gonna go with this graph here. Um, so here is our equation from zero to four pi over three. Write an integral for the area of S. Oh, it says let S be the region enclosed by the curve and the X axis in the third quadrant. So that's like this tiny little thing right in here. So this is our, our region S. So one half, and then we just need to figure out the boundaries. Here would be pi. If we rotate it over to here, that would be pi. And then it says we're ending at four pi over three. So pi to four pi over three um, of all of this, I'm just gonna write r squared d theta. And we're gonna type that in the calculator. I won't be able to just type r when I put it in the calculator, but just I didn't feel like retalking the moment. All right, so one half math nine pi to four pi over three. 
And then it'll be all of this squared B theta. So 0.168. Right? A particle is moving along this curve. Time is theta. At time one, so basically when theta is one, is the particle moving left or right? Is the particle moving up or down? Justify your answer. So left and right would be the x dimension. This is going to kind of take up a lot of space. I'm going to try to write small for this. So x is r cosine of theta. So it's going to be all of this cosine of theta. So to see what direction is moving left or right, we're going to look at dx, d, or I guess I should change those to t's. I don't know, I'm gonna go with theta since I wrote theta. Theta is T, so it's kind of inter interchangeable. If you wanted to change these to T's and call it dx dt, um, that, you know, fine. Um, so we're gonna look at dx d theta. If that comes out positive, we know it's moving to the right. If it comes out negative, we know it's moving to the left. All right, so this is gonna be a product rule. This is like, just like we did on the first page of this study guide. So the first thing times derivative of the second plus the second times derivative of the first. So that would be negative sine of theta over two. So derivative of cosine is negative sine. You would chain on a one half and the one half and the two are gonna cancel. So now we're gonna do dx d theta uh, when theta equals one. So we're talking about at time one. So I'm gonna pull out my calculator. And I'm going to type all of this, but plug in one for theta. All right, so I got negative 2.577. And so that means moving to the left. So moving left because dx d theta when theta equals one is less than zero. So we know moving to the left. Now we're gonna repeat this process. I'm gonna do the exact same thing for our y dimension. So it's gonna be r sine of theta. So all of this and then times sine of theta. And so we're going to look at dy d theta, which again is going to be a product rule. So first times derivative of the second plus second times derivative of the first. Um, again, that will be negative sine theta over two. And then we're going to look at that when theta equals one. So I'm going to pull out my calculator and plug all of that in, but put in one for theta. All right, so I got 1.085. And since that's positive, moving up because dy d theta at theta equals one is greater than zero. So that's your justification. And you can kind of tell this just from looking at the curve. So we're going this way. At theta being one, you would be like over here somewhere. So you're going like in a that way direction. So it would be left and up. Um, but you can't just <laughs> say that, oh, well, I looked at the graph and it was like that. You know, you, when it says justify, you have to show the mathematics that justifies that. So that's why we had to come in this for a while. All right, write an expression for dr d theta. So we had r equals all of this. We're just going to do this derivative with respect to theta. So dr d theta equals, all right, one is a constant that's going to be gone. It would be negative sine theta over two. And that's all there is for that, but we're going to use that in part D. Find the maximum distance that the curve is from the origin. So that's the maximum R value um, on the interval 0 to 4 pi over 3. This is your candidates test. Just like we did back earlier this year, you're going to check your endpoints and your critical points. So critical points are where the derivative equals 0. 
So we're going to set this that we found in part C equal to zero. Divide over a negative, it would still be zero. I'll go ahead and write that. And so we're looking for places where sine is zero, um, which the first one would be zero. Multiply over the two, you're going to get theta is zero. And then the next place would be pi. When you multiply over the two, you're going to get two pi which is already outside of your interval. So we're not going to use that one. So actually, the only values we need to test are these endpoints, 0 and 4 pi over 3. And we're going to plug those into R. I'm not going to shift the paper down again. It's that R statement that's up at the top there. So if you plug in 0, cosine of 0 would be 1, times 2 is 2, and then plus 1 is 3. And if you plug in 4 pi over 3, Divide that by two. So that would give you two pi over three. Cosine of two pi over three. Two pi over three would be right here. So cosine of that would be negative a half. Uh, times two would be negative one. And then plus one would give you zero. So we were asked for the maximum. So the maximum distance from the origin, that's the maximum R value. Uh, is three when theta equals zero. And the chart is your justification. It's like we've tested all the candidates possible and this is what it came out to. So the chart is your justification. You don't have to write like the cause or anything. Right. Uh, use the graph of this curve from zero to pi over three. Find the area of the region. All right, be one half, zero to pi over three, and then this statement squared d theta. We're going to type that in. Here. Right, so 0.261. And then last one, there's a line through the origin with a positive slope m that divides that region into two equal areas. You know what, let's take a look at it. I haven't been graphing a lot of these. Um, oh, you know what, I already have that in there. Because you know, a lot of them you're given the, the boundaries or else the graph is already printed on the paper. But if it was me taking the test, I would probably go ahead and look at most of these. All right, so we want this zero to pi over three. I have this negative 10 to 10. I have a feeling I'm gonna need that to be a lot smaller. Let's do negative five to five and see if that's good. Oh, that's still way too much. Let me go back. Uh, let's do negative two to two. There, that's a little bit better. So we have this little like flower petal. Let me go ahead and just draw that on here. So I like that. Um, don't make fun of my drawing, it's good enough. So we have a line through the origin that's going to divide this into two equal areas. And so this line is y equals mx. It's like y equals mx plus b, it's just there's b is zero. There's no b value because it went through the origin. So it's dividing this into two equal areas and we want to write an equation that would give the value of m. So what we're going to do is we want this area to be equal to this area. So let me set it up you know, as far as we can go and then we'll have to go back and find what we're missing. So for this, this first area, like this area right here, I wanna go from zero until whatever this angle is. And that's what we don't know, we'll have to get that. So from zero until that angle and then sine of three theta squared d theta equals, so we want that area to be equal to this area and so that would be one half integral from whatever that angle is until pi over three. And then the same thing inside d theta. So what we need to figure out is that angle. So remember it's tangent of that angle equals y over x. So that would equal, but y equals mx over x and the x's are gonna cancel. So we have tangent of theta equals m. If you want to get theta by itself, you would have to inverse tangent both sides. So it would be inverse tangent of m. 
is what that angle theta would be. I know that looks funny, but that's what it comes out to. You could also write arc tangent. I just didn't because there's already not very much space there to put it, but the inverse tangent of M because these X's canceled out. Uh, we'll give you that angle. And then you don't have to do anything with that. You just have to set it 